Hello and welcome. Our guest today is Gita Irawan Wirjawan, Indonesia's Trade Minister and the Chairman of the Ninth Ministerial Conference of the WTO. Minister Gita has degrees from the University of Texas, from Baylor University, and from Harvard's John F. Kennedy School of Government. He's been an investment banker, he's chaired Indonesia's Investment Coordinating Board, and he's the founder of the Ankora Foundation, a philanthropic organization dedicated to lighting a fire in the minds of Indonesia's young through better education. He's an extremely good golfer and a brilliant piano player. We welcome today Minister Gita Wirjawan. Welcome, Minister. Thanks, Keith. Nice to have you with us. Um, Happy to be here. Let's talk a little bit about MC9. Okay. Where are we in terms of the preparations for this ministerial, both substantively and logistically? I think logistically, I think we're, we're ready. And we've been coordinating with everybody within WTO in terms of the preparatory steps that should have been taken and should be taken between now and December. Uh, I think we're going to be ready uh, from a logistical standpoint now. Substantively, uh, this is, I think, uh, the more interesting part where uh, on each one of the three agenda items that we've got, uh, we've got to basically come to a landing on, uh, I think there's been movement, there's been a deceleration, there has been, you know, uh, basically stoppage. Uh, but we're, we're optimistic as host, uh, and we've been engaged in conversations with all members uh, at various points in the last few months, and with the hope and view uh, that to the extent that there is polar, polariza polarization on one or two topics between, you know, two groups or more, uh, we can have uh, a better understanding by, you know, many of these people. So. Uh, we're, we're, we're optimistic uh, on, on the substance, we're also optim optimistic on, on the logistics. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, there's, there isn't, uh, you know, one or two uh, issues that uh, will be easy uh, to deal with. Uh, for example, the issue on agriculture, this is something that, you know, you and many people at the WTO are, are, have been aware of, uh, and this is something that uh, we have been engaging ourselves with uh, increasingly uh, in the past few weeks and hopefully in the next few weeks. As chair, how do you see your role in the lead up to Bali and, and what will your role be at the ministerial conference itself? Well, I think we've got to stay as impartial as possible. Uh, as much as there is one or two things that may resonate to our hearts uh, a little bit more than they would to other countries or economies. Uh, we are a developing country, Indonesia. Uh, we are a growing developing country. Uh, we embrace the aspirations of developing countries. We also embrace the aspirations of the least developed countries. Uh, we also would like to embrace uh, the aspirations of the more developed, if not uh, the most developed economies. Uh, I think that will, uh, you know, help us in trying to understand you know, where each uh, group of economies or people are coming from. But I think as chair, we've got to make sure that everybody is given the chance uh, to basically voice uh, their views and opinions about things. Yeah. And try and broker a consensus. Correct. In, in as an honest way as possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely Not easy. hard to do. <laughs> um, well, what's at stake in this meeting? What, what do you see as the, as the possible outcomes and, and what does this meeting really mean? Well, you know, I think we're all tempted to call it the, the Bali round. Mm. Uh, you know, we've had the Doha negotiations ongoing for the last 12 years with not a whole lot of successes. Mm. Uh, and we would like this to be a defining moment, I think, for multilateral trading system. Uh, I know times are not exactly great, you know, economically for some member countries. Uh, and we're understanding of that. We're sympathetic uh, with uh, people who are, you know, going through a little bit of difficulties. Uh, and we want to make sure that this defines the future of multilateral trading system. And the principle of nothing uh, being agreed upon until everything is being agreed upon. 
uh, I think has to be advanced uh, for everybody's sake. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're seeing uh, a greater degree of regionalism, bilateralism, and plurilateralism. And that, I think, poses a bit of a risk. Mm -hmm. But coming from Indonesia, where we've seen difficult years in the past, uh, you know, we, we are a little bit up optimistic about the future and we, we do believe that uh, uh, we can come to some kind of a landing uh, with, with respect to each one of these uh, three uh, issues of trade facilitations, agriculture and least developed countries. Let me come back to something you just mentioned a minute ago, the issue of regionalism. Right. Quite a lot of regional activity in your part of the world, but now transatlantic as well. Correct. Um, do you see these as being complementary to the multilateral trading system? Are they a danger? H how do you see them interacting? I've, I've always been a believer that each one of these activities uh, has never been a substitute to the spirit of multilateralism. Uh, if any, it has been in complementarity with the spirit of multilateralism. Uh, and, and that, I think, is, is the spirit that we're hopeful that everybody would share and embrace. Uh, and that, I think, would, will help ensure uh, positivity within the context of the upcoming Bali uh, meeting in December. You, you mentioned a little bit about uh, Indonesia's uh, profile in the trading community. What does this meeting mean for Indonesia specifically? Are there any benefits for the country? It, it? it means a lot. Uh, Indonesia being the 15th largest economy in the world, I think it is the aspiration of the current generation and the future generation of Indonesia uh, that we become more relevant in the coming years. Uh, nobody is aspiring that we shouldn't be greater than being number 15. Uh, I think we'd like to be number 14, 13, 12, and whatever. Mm. And, and I think profiling ourselves in the international community in ways like the MC9, the APAC community, and others, uh, I think would be a good way to make sure that we become not only a good member of the uh, international community, but we become a lot more relevant in the international community. It's nice for everyone to have the chance to go to Bali as well. Nice beaches, good sunshine, and, you know, Beautiful I think... Place. Yeah. Well, I hope everybody's not going there just for the beaches. No, but, I don't but think for, for a good lot of the beaches, but uh, nice to be there anyway. What, uh, just a, a final question, are, are you worried about uh, protectionism? Are you worried that, that if we can't get things moving through the Doha round, uh, that people, because very honestly, these regional agreements, although they, yeah. they, seem, they seem easier than the, than the Doha round, may not be easy either. Are you worried that there could be a, a fallback into protectionist behavior on the part of key players? I, I think it is everybody's concern that if things were not to work out, uh, then there is reason to believe in the very existence of a higher degree of protectionism. Uh, having said that, uh, I'm, uh, I tend to look at it a little bit differently. Uh, the regionalism, the bilateralism, if done right, uh, I think they will serve the purpose of being complementarity, in complementarity with the spirit of multilateral trading system. Now, we can take the example of Indonesia and ASEAN. ASEAN has struck a deal, you know, on free trade with six, uh, you know, strategic partners. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, as we go into this new mode of regional comprehensive economic partnership, that I think will even further embellish uh, the very spirit of not only free trade but fair trade. That I think is, is the directionality that we would like to basically move forward with and if that were the case and to the extent that the other regional groupings be it you know the TPP and what have you uh, are moving with the view of embellishing uh, their notion of free trade and fair trade I think it's only going to help with you know our ultimate you know, long-term cause uh, with respect to multilateral trading system. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully we, we, we will be in Bali with, with a completely, not a completely, but, but a fresh perspective of not only where things are, but where things ought to go. And I, I, I do believe that we've got to probably name it the Bali round. You know, I may sound selfish about it, but, uh, you know, I think Doha has been around for 12 years. I think it's important for people to have a fresh perspective about the years to come. Keita Weirdjewan, thank you for joining us, and thanks to you for watching.